everyone. Um, welcome to the new season of BetaCast. Um, this is the, the channel of uh, interviews uh, made by BetaE to the entire um, innovation ecosystem or to any interested people um, who would like to know more or be part of this conversation um, regarding innovation, collaboration, and for sure diversity, because without diversity, there is no innovation. And we just finished a season dedicated to um, new media. And, and now we started a new one focused on um, innovation policies. This is also a partnership um, we, with Google for this season. And we have a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a group of very interesting people uh, jumping in this conversation. And um, I have the pleasure of, of hosting for this first episode um, Benedict Blomeyer, um, he is the director for European Union policies at um, Allied for Startups. And Benedict, thank you so much for being here with us uh, for this conversation. And before um, uh, I can, this is a, almost like a hook to go straight to to our chat uh, because we can start from the very beginning. Um, for those who may not know. Uh, please, um, not only introduce yourself, but explain to our audience um, what um, is Allied for Startups, how did you start, and what is uh, your mission, um, and what about the reach of Allied Startups today? I know um, the project has started in Europe, but now it has an international reach, right? Absolutely. First of all, let me say thank you to, to you, Alison. It's great to be back in touch. Um, in a nutshell, Allied for Startups is a global association of startup associations. So the story of AFS is that just over five years ago, 12 startup associations came together under our founder, Melissa Belaustein, in France. Um, and they found that while they all had a pretty good contact and reach in terms of advocacy with their national governments, on a European and on a global scale, startups weren't really present in policy discussions at all. So they came together and formed AFS to change that. And here we are uh, just over five years later, we have uh, 46 members and we're in over three uh, continents and 30 countries. Um, so there's kind of a push uh, to establish AFS uh, across countries and across ecosystems. Um, at the same time, we wanna remain as, as agile and nimble as the startups we represent. And we don't feel like we ever really wanna become a, like a big association putting out endless position papers. We want to be you know, direct and to the point uh, and positive. Um, and about myself, I have a background in, in politics and history. I've been in Brussels for, I think, four, four years now. And um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very much invested in all things politics. Uh, I kind of um, stumbled into tech, but um, the more I've been working in tech, the more I'm interested about it, because it's one of the few areas where you're really thinking about the future all the time. Uh, comparing, for instance, to working, uh, you know, in, 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 in automobiles or, or, or agriculture, um, and we are always thinking about also constructing a framework for the future. And that's something I'm personally uh, very enthusiastic about. Super. Um, you said that uh, the, uh, the mission um, of Alire Startups was truly uh, related to discuss on a tangible way policy making uh, and um, to the startup ecosystem. Uh, but probably a core question to do this bridge and to create results, it's about engagement. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think startups are easy to engage in these discussions? Because if they are not um, within this process, um, this can be a bit um, split efforts or you can work apart from this reality. So, um, Sometimes, do you think people can be so much entrepreneurship or achievement oriented that maybe they could forget to get in sync? Maybe uh, they forget to figure out what um, the state, uh, any government, or even Allied for Startups, uh, an entity like Allied for Startups, could do for, for them to thrive, for them to get their goals? What about this, this probably this? core mission to make things happen 
I think you're, I mean, you're absolutely on the money there. It's a question we ask ourselves a lot as well. A startup founder probably has a list of, of a million priorities and, and policy is a discussion say for a later day, definitely not on the top of the priority list. And I think part of our, our job is to be the best possible translator to uh, on the one hand, understand what's happening in the policy environment and make it clearly understandable for a founder who maybe only has five minutes to deal with policy issues in a day. And on the other hand, uh, uh, we have to be very good listeners and we have to understand what um, uh, entrepreneurs are doing and, and be able to translate that back into policy asks for uh, politicians. So, uh, you know, and, and that's kind of what we try to do at our best. And uh, I think there's many challenges on the way. Um, I, I think back to uh, our, our, our uh, uh, copyright directive, which is what we worked on in the last mandate, which was a, a great learning experience for me as well. Just to give you an example, you know, when we uh, uh, did an open letter in 2017 to rally entrepreneurs around a couple of key messages we wanted to share with MEPs, you know, we got a lot of interest and entrepreneurs from across Europe uh, signed on. And then one year later, uh, this file was still stuck in the parliament. We had to call out to the entrepreneurs again. And many of them were already in a completely different reality. They were saying, oh, Benedict, no, we're doing Series B now. Uh, and, and we're in a completely different universe. Why are you guys still talking about the same article and the same copyright? Uh, and it just goes to show that, that, that politics can take a lot longer. And it's therefore also on us as associations to keep this level of, of pressure and engagement. You know, startups come and go. I think uh, the cool thing about associations is that they can have a more established conversation uh, uh, in the long run. So that's where, really where we see our added value. Mm -hmm. There's, um, you probably, uh, uh, for sure, you know that very classic graphic where you see uh, the relation between um, time and change, and then you see technology, then society, uh, then companies, uh, and at the very bottom, politicians uh, in this relationship between um, time and, and change. Uh, this is just an hypothesis, but maybe um, this uh, pace gap, the way to, to keep up with the changes, um, could be uh, an engagement challenge. I mean, um, this can be sometimes frustrating because we know that policymaking is not such a quick thing to be achieved. You, you can see the changes in the short term, even when you're talking, for sure, you, we are going to talk about um, uh, coronavirus and the impact on, on the ecosystem today. Um, but would you say that this um, re real gap between the agility of startup businesses and growth and the policy making uh, universe could be a disengagement topic to be tackled. Yeah, I think there's, I mean, you know, as a, as a, as a European personally, of course, I also feel that obviously we have rules and regulations for good reasons and uh, the political process takes time and it, there's a deliberation and that's uh, there for a reason. Uh, at the same time, uh, especially the way the digital economy has grown. Um, and you've mentioned the exponential growth that you know the platform economy and the digital economy have brought with them. Um, do make us think about whether the, the policy tools are still really uh, up to speed. You know, if, if, if as you said, a, a, a certain European law takes five years to pass, uh, and then you know, a review or a refit would be maybe two or three or five years after that, uh, the startup economy will look very different. And then, so uh, I think what we can do is, is not just encourage a very regular refit and to keep the conversation going. It's also to um, encourage uh, policymakers to think a bit more uh, uh, like a startup. Uh, I think all the founders in your network, uh, they have an iteration process in mind. You know, they try something, they test something, and if it's not working right, they change something. Um, and I think this pragmatism and this forward thinking attitude is something we try and transport to, to politicians when we uh, interact with them. It's funny to think that maybe one of the key features of democracy is not being that agile, even if you think about the direct democracy, things take time. And this can be sometimes uh, hard to, to, to manage this, this, this internal gap. We want immediate change, we want, you, you want a movement um, as like a touchscreen changes. And we know this uh, ain't going to happen 
even if we try to, to improve democracy. But, but I'm sure that um, over time, over these five years, um, lots of things uh, have happened. Um, different causes, um, different um, initiatives to be designed and to be pushed for um, during these five years, being in, 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 especially being in Brussels, where the European Union, at least, um, core things used to happen. We'd like to highlight some special story or some special achievement that you could be able to help and to create change, being a, a, an association for the ecosystem. Yeah, I'd be happy to give a few examples. Um, of course, with the caveat that we're only a, a small wheel in a big political system, um, and that oftentimes um, creating a good result in politics means preventing something bad from happening. Um, I can think of one or two examples. So uh, maybe a positive example first. Um, there is a, a European law on um, how public sector institutions have to uh, make their data available for innovation. And um, so, you know, if you think of your local waterworks or, you know, a, a tram timetable, um, public sector information um, has now become more open and online and accessible for startups to innovate on because of the PSI directive. Public Sector Information Directive. This was reviewed because um, there was already a predecessor, but this wasn't really working in practice. Um, uh, for instance, some of our members told us that they were getting public sector information in PDFs, so tables in PDFs, and, and you know, imagine working with that as a startup. So uh, there's a new law which has been passed and it's being implemented right now. And we were you know, really enthusiastic about startups getting all the data they need, especially if your taxpayer money has, has helped create it. Um, that's one of the positive examples. Uh, another one is um, the free flow of non-personal data regulation. Again, it's probably in the category of rules that uh, not many have heard about on the ground, but it's also part of the backbone of the digital economy, um, which basically means that uh, member states cannot force a given company to localize data either for processing or storage in your country. So this means that a startup in Portugal can offer a uh, services with, uh, with uh, non-personal data in, in France or in, in, in Germany without the, the German government saying, no, no, you have to store the data in a server here, uh, uh, which, you know, if you're a startup and you're looking to have your first client in Germany, that might be a real obstacle to, uh, you know, have a data center there. So um, those are just two examples from the last mandate. Um, and maybe one where, which was a bit more, more complicated, was um, uh, uh, text and data mining which I'm sure you and your, your, all your uh, network know is super important for AI. Um, this was also on the table. Um, so the ability to, to conduct text and data mining on the free and open available data on the internet was um, challenged under Article 3 of the Copyright Directive. And it was a long and hard fought uh, battle. And uh, copyright didn't go, uh, uh, the directive didn't go as we had not wanted it to go, but at least on text and data mining, we got an exemption so that startups can keep innovating with uh, free and available uh, public data. Mm -hmm. So those are just three examples. Okay, super. Still, before jumping in the COVID-19 thing, um, before this, could you, could you share um, which were um, your priorities for, for, for the next years? I know, for instance, um, Okay, you just uh, told me about artificial intelligence, but there are also blockchain, data access, privacy, net neutrality, online platforms, for sure, this is super important. Um, is there a specific uh, cause or topic which is the most relevant, not only for Allied for Starbucks, but also for you personally speaking? Yeah, I think, so you're absolutely right. Um, these topics are all important. And uh, just for all of your uh, listeners to understand, uh, Allied for Startups' priorities are laid out in its mandate, which is voted on by its members, the associations. So BITAE and Startup Malaysia and Startup Canada, they all come together in an assembly and vote on what Allied for Startups should do. So it's important to say that these are not uh, chosen just randomly. But a deliberate uh, effort. Yes, exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a, a grassroots effort. Um, and for this There's year, also democracy here. Exactly, exactly. And while for, for this year we had initially planned to think about online platforms and AI a lot, and we are still doing this, 
of course, uh, COVID is kind of messing with our priorities as well. Um, something I'm, I'm more and more passionate about, especially as we think about coming out of, uh, of COVID is how we, uh, uh, how we can further leverage talent in Europe. I think that's um, one of the you know, big untapped resources still uh, as a German. I know that there's over 50,000 Germans, for instance, in the Valley. Um, and you know, that's, that's great. Uh, but you know, it's also the case that they're going there because uh, maybe some of the conditions uh, in, in, in Silicon Valley are, are more conducive uh, for them to build a startup or to, to scale it. Um, I think there's still more way to go uh, in our ecosystems here to uh, be, have a great environment for talent. So I'm going to mention just one or two things we care about in this regard. Um, stock options, uh, stock option reform and startup visas are two levers where we can uh, do a better job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I just try to, to, to go over uh, these topics because each one of them, for sure, they could be an entire season of talks uh, mm -hmm. and different perspectives on it. Uh, I'm sure we can we can jump uh, and go into details on each one um, of them. But I would like to, to highlight one point, um, not to share your opinion. Um, let me say it at least to, 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 to keep uh, our, uh, our this free flow uh, conversation. Um, maybe I would say that um, Allied for Startups is now uh, running a roadshow, right? To discuss uh, the digital single act. Um, and the DSA is, if you permit me to say, um, will be probably the most transversal topic on startups um, since it's about the entire online platform economy. Could you please first uh, explain what uh, the Digital Single Act is and then um, share with us how has been, um, how has been this roadshow experience so far? I think it's great uh, to have this conversation uh, already. So the Digital Services Act uh, in a nutshell, and it's hard to, to be super precise because it's still high level and it's going to be covering a lot of topics. But the Digital Services Act will replace the e-commerce directive, which um, really has been uh, the foundation for the digital economy uh, in the last 20 years. Um, the e-commerce directive is from 2000. Amongst other things, it lays down an intermediary liability exemption the no general monitoring obligation and the country of origin principle. All these three things have allowed startups in Europe to, to thrive. Uh, the intermediary liability exemption, for instance, um, states that platforms who have a notice and takedown uh, uh, system in place and do certain other things are not liable directly for third party user generated uploaded content. So uh, uh, if a, if a, uh, uh, food delivery platform is delivering, you know, is facilitating the, the delivery from A to B, which is not directly liable for the food uh, that is transported. Um, and that's, of course, you know, a, a, a great opportunity for startups to, to uh, found and scale up. So uh, it's important for us uh, in this debate to uh, underscore how important the intermediate liability exemption has been for, for startups across Europe. And of course, there's things that can be updated the law is from 2000. Which platform uh, do you still know, which has been around in 2000? So what we're trying to do with the DSA for Startups campaign is, is one, to go out and speak to startup ecosystems about this. We want to understand uh, what the business models look like today. We want to encourage folks to, to uh, learn about the, the DSA. And we want to encourage everyone to please answer the commission's consultation. Um, and we want to be helpful to folks to do that. As you rightly mentioned, um, the GDPR uh, is a great example uh, that, that showed that policy really matters for startups. And it's, it's, it's being done in Brussels, regardless of whether you're involved or not. So this time around, we have a great opportunity to, to be engaged from the get-go as the consultation is happening now. And the proposal from the European Commission will be coming in Q4 or maybe Q1 in 2021. So now is the time to uh, uh, speak up about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, um, I wrongly said um, single instead of service. Um, but um, again, um, now coming back to, to the experience, the, the roadshow itself, mm -hmm. how has been the, the, uh, this, um, this experience so far? And maybe I could connect to one more question, which is 
okay, maybe a very early stage startup will, won't be aware of this regulation, of these um, obstacles to be, to be um, overtaken, um, to, to succeed. Do you believe the ecosystem is aware of it? Do they understand uh, regarding our personal experience or the, or the roadshow itself? People are, are people aware of it or uh, of the changes that they may face thanks to this? I think um, insufficiently um, and it's our job to make sure more po folks learn about this. I would generally say that it's not just a problem of the, the of digital legislation mm -hmm. made in Brussels, that it has a certain uh, uh, lag and a certain uh, uh, communication uh, uh, flaw in terms of getting out to countries and, and getting feedback from the ecosystem. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a lot more that can be done. You rightly said that this will be the, probably the biggest uh, piece of legislation for the digital economy for startups in this mandate. This legislation will be um, discussed for many years probably and um, pretty much everyone from, from you know, bigger companies to brands to civil rights organizations will all have their say. This Digital Services Act will be looking at many, many different problems from hate speech online to election integrity to issues with the collaborative economy. All of this is jumbled together uh, uh, in this Digital Services Act. Something we and our members have been quite critical of. This is called, uh, in Brussels lingo, often called Christmas tree legislation, you know, where everybody adds something they want to see done. And it makes it a lot harder to kind of have a problem and a solution. Um, but it, uh, in, our, in this instance, um, not enough uh, folks in the startup world know about it yet. And um, that also kind of will lead to the problem that too little startup entrepreneurs will maybe answer to the consultation. Mm -hmm. And do you have a, how can you say, like a, a minimal um, goal to, to achieve um, regarding this topic is to raise awareness and then um, um, push the startups or try uh, to invite them to, to, to act or to raise their voices by themselves? Um, it's more about some specific topic that must be included on the final discussion. I mean, and there's a, there's kind of a balance for us. Of course, we know what we care about and we know what our members care about, the associations. Uh, of course, startup founders have very different uh, also perspectives on, on maybe also on what's wrong and what's not, what's, what's working in the platform economy. So uh, far from us speaking on their behalf, we encourage them to engage on the topic and to uh, share their views with the commission. At this point, I would say the more the merrier. So as an umbrella- Especially as because as you can have a movement from the bottom up. Uh, trying to, exactly. to, to follow this approach, right? Exactly. And part of our job is also going to be to leverage uh, this engagement from startup, uh, startup founders. We want to uh, make sure they have a voice directly. We want to make sure they're speaking to their associations, to the Vida'is uh, and, and to the France Digitales of, of their countries, uh, to make sure their voice is heard through their associations, which have more time than, than them mostly. To, uh, uh, most of the time to engage with this uh, in, in Brussels. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. really it's a, it's a multi-tier approach. At the same time, we're also um, conducting a study to learn more about uh, the impact of some of these uh, new proposals. So we're also doing some research on the side to uh, be able to also have numbers and I'm uh, looking forward to sharing some of these insights with all of you going forward. Yeah, and uh, also uh, I believe that this is good uh, as an inspiration, because you can have a, a, a personal uh, voice um, on this, but you can also be creative. To can uh, you can also uh, push for an agenda uh, uh, on the media in your country, trying to, to to raise the question. Because for sure, this is going to have an impact. Um, Do you but, think? Uh, Alice, can I just ask? Like, I mean, you know, there's in in, in Portugal, there's like the uni places. Or I, I think that's a Portuguese marketplace for student accommodation. Or e Solidar, I think, is, a, is another one from my memory. Uh, it's a charity uh, for fundraising. Those are, are platforms in your ecosystem, um, um, but of course are relying on the e-commerce directive framework. Um, is it your impression that they're you know fully on top of what's happening in, in Brussels, or uh, that they, there could be more engagement? 
Um, well, if I understood the question, it's hard to, to, to uh, address uh, you an answer um, on behalf of them, you see. Um, but I'm afraid that, uh, and I guess uh, if you permit me to say, uh, you had, we had the opportunity to talk about this before. Um, the, it would be great to have this roadshow, this agenda here in Portugal or in any European uh, Union country, because we, it's truly really important to, to, to invite these people uh, at first to be aware of it and then to try to, to, to push for this agenda uh, uh, regarding policymaking, not only as public speaking on this. Um, it's hard to, to, to tell you that they are aware and they are acting on it. Uh, but I try to highlight um, the Digital Service Act because as, as I told you, this is super transversal. It's, it's impact almost every single startup business uh, in Europe, not to say uh, in the world. And that's why at first the awareness thing is the first step. Uh, but I can, uh, I can ask them and maybe I can tag yeah. them to watch uh, our, our recording and they, uh, in them, they can give um, a personal feedback to you um, about it. I'd be thrilled. Um, and just to finish up, I mean, the, what we're doing with this roadshow, of course, we can't physically come out right now to visit everyone. That's what we had planned. But right now we're doing webinars and we'll be doing webinars across uh, Europe with our members. We have already done a few. And as I said, we're trying to inform everyone and we have a conversation with policymakers in these webinars about some of these uh, provisions like uh, no monitoring or country of origin or, or liability questions. Uh, so uh, it's ongoing and we encourage everyone to be involved. Mm -hmm. Super. Well, um, we, uh, you just said a word that now I forgot and I was uh, going to use as a hook to, um, to, to, to move further. Um, but to move forward to, to uh, an avoidable question, which is um, coronavirus, COVID-19, and, uh, and the impact for the economy. For sure, we could um, speak and act for days and weeks and months um, regarding the human side of it, the social side um, of it. Uh, but here, um, we are talking about policy making for the ecosystem. Um, would you say, um, considering your experience so far, uh, that at least in Europe, did we have a new turn on uh, priorities or, um, or a sense of urgency because of this? Because we have parallel topics to be managed. We just went through uh, quickly um, on some of them, but. I'm sure this has changed almost everything. Um, mm. What about the impact for you as association representing different voices? Um, um, what about your experience on this road show? Um, are the startups stopping to talk about other topics and just trying to, to talk about this and ask for help? So I think there's several parts to your question. If I'm understanding, it's also mainly about how Corona virus has been impacting uh, what's happening here in Brussels and whether Brussels is, you think, uh, reacting appropriately. Yeah, uh, because that, that's the point. Um, yeah. There's uh, different topics to be explored regarding policy making, but then you have this bump. Yeah. And how do you face and how do you handle with the situation? Because uh, different levels of urgency yeah yeah and i think i mean of course it's unfortunately still the beginning so uh we we are kind of the jury is out to see how successful europe uh, is with dealing with this crisis but um a first observation is that the eu has been a lot quicker to respond for instance compared to the crisis in 2008 2009 where i think the fact that europe lagged quite a long time um, also led to a, a, a slower recovery and this time around, there is definitely the recognition that we have to add, uh, act early and, and decisively. I think that message has been driven home and that's being done. Now, when I look at um, what kind of action we're seeing, um, and this is very much different across member states, I'm sure we can talk about that in a second. Um, there is still uh, a room to improve and, uh, as we would say, uh, focus more on the startups. Um, you are saying, you're absolutely right. There are important policy priorities that don't disappear. 
I mean, the Green New Deal, is, it was a massive flagship program of this European Commission. Now, we really believe that we can use this uh, next generation EU bailout uh, or support for the, 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 the economy to actually leverage startups as innovation and work on the Green New Deal. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, either digital or green. Um, startups are kind of the, uh, the, the glue that bind these goals together and can provide the innovation uh, in, in, in basically any sector. Um, and, and from what we've seen so far, uh, not enough focus has been uh, uh, placed on startups. But it's still early days. Um, this funding proposal is only just now going through the motions, but that's kind of a first, a first feedback uh, uh, on, the, on the policy side. For, for Alec, for startups, just quickly, um, yes, of course, this has kind of changed absolutely what we do. We are, you know, existing and our priorities uh, are determined at the discretion of our members. And if you know, if you would have asked founders half a year ago what was most important for them, some would have said uh, funding round or uh, going to a new market or I can't hire the right people. And right now, I'm sure you're hearing the same thing. It's all about survival, liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. Um, there's just a different reality and uh, we have to adapt to this and also make sure we are representing this uh, vis-a-vis policymakers. So some of the things we've done is of course to we keep raising these issues to policymakers um, that uh, I think startups have a unique role because startups are actually helping to solve parts of, of the COVID outbreak. Thinking about you know a Velmio app which is an Estonian pregnancy App, which has actually uh, done a complete uh, uh, 180 degree turn and is now building a corona tracing app you know so startups are part of the solution but at the same time startups are a lot more uh, um, vulnerable because they are not as established and they don't have as much uh, liquidity lying around because they invested into growth and into new markets so um, 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 policymakers might ask okay so what's the problem uh, startups fail all the time um, it's not just about a few startups failing anymore we are talking about ecosystems uh, failing, and that has taken a long time to build, and that you cannot just repair overnight. If ecosystems fail, then the startup economy generally will be in a very bad shape, and uh, that's just a generally a very bleak output uh, outlook for the for for the economy in Europe. Mm -hmm. I know this can be a quite delicate question um, or sensitive question, um, but are you able to? to to connect uh there, there, in, in, is there a, a straight connection between um the way some of the european union countries uh, as a national vision for innovation um deal with it i mean um okay everyone is in survival mode um but some countries are more future oriented some other countries are more okay Let's tr just try to, to save what's really immediate and then let's talk about the rest. Um, do, you feel, uh, do you believe you can, you can create this connection? Like the country is really uh, oriented to, to innovation, to digital transformation. Are they more um, organized or sustained on the approach to, to tackle COVID-19 consequences? Or is it too uh, pretty hard question to be answered? I mean, I, I definitely would say that uh, we've seen in our membership uh, feedback that some countries have done a better job than others. I mean, it's no secret that France has kind of been pushing itself as the startup nation and has been you know, really much ahead of the game in the COVID-19 response. I think Germany's response has also not been, not been bad. Um, I think when we think about the COVID response, I think it makes sense to think about three categories. Um, one is liquidity support, so the state giving giving money for for ecosystems to stay above water. The other is state not taking money, so uh, like uh, tax deferments or 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 VAT uh, deferments. And the third would be kind of support for employees, so uh, uh, furlough payments to for to keep the staff on board. And I, the countries that have kind of taken a holistic approach of an ecosystem, they've. Uh, done better than others is, is what we would say. Now, obviously, we're only looking at this as an umbrella association, and members in the, on the ground will know this better. Um, but there's, I think, a lot of room to learn from each other and uh, exchange some of these best practices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you recently shared 
um, an open letter um, highlighting that um, a huge and COVID-19 uh, related liquidity support for startup ecosystems um, shouldn't be delayed or blocked by European Union legislation. In particular, um, the temporary framework for state aid. Um, would you say uh, that loss making, being loss making business by design, um, such as startups, um, are they well represented in this temporary framework? That's a, I, I see you've been doing your homework very well. Um, indeed, we sent a letter to Commissioner Vestager uh, a few weeks ago to uh, relay the feedback we had from members of ours um, to, for your viewers to understand uh, basically uh, states cannot just give money to uh, companies uh, and, and pick winners and losers. And of course, we have state aid frameworks in place to, to prevent that. And that, there's good reasons for that. Um, however, of course, Corona is a, a completely new ballgame. And uh, right now it's about making sure that businesses in, and the entire ecosystem stays above water. And uh, one of these definitions in the state aid framework has been that an undertaking in difficulty um, may not receive state aid. And an undertaking in difficulty in most cases is defined as a loss making company. Now, again, if there's an old, uh, no, a, a company which has been around for 50 years and it's loss making, there's a good chance that it's probably not worthy of, of uh, you know, that it has had problems before Corona. But uh, in the cases of startups, as you said, many of them are, are loss making by design because they're putting a bet on, on growth and, and, and being profit, more profitable in the future. And um, this does not mean they're a failing business. And there's an important difference here. And this is something we are articulating right now to the European Commission as well. It's an ongoing conversation, to be perfectly honest. So I cannot <clears throat> say everything uh, in, in public yet. But what I would say is there's very much an awareness on the side of the European Commission that uh, this is, you know, uh, that ecosystems are going under and need to be supported. And also, I would challenge, you know, challenge also uh, viewers in, in, in member states to think about uh, when a, 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 a government says that it cannot help startups because of uh, a, a European law being in the way, is that, you know, just passing the blame to Europe? Or is this a problem that all other countries in Europe have also been mentioning? Um, so it's, you know, it's it, unfortunately also in crises like these, you do still see the similar dynamics of, of you know, uh, if it's not, uh, if something cannot be done or maybe if money cannot be given or is not wanted to be given to maybe blame Europe for it. Um, mm -hmm. This is not a, a novelty. Mm -hmm. I would love to go through uh, this uh, a bit more and go deeper on this. Um, we went through different uh, topics, but this is the perfect hook for me to uh, kind of wrap up question, um, not necessarily um, a, polemic, a polemic one, but um, babe, why so difficult for a politician or a legislator to understand the difference between a startup and an SME because sometimes um, this is a clear uh, blocker to policy making for startups in many different levels why is that so hard is only a question of goodwill is it a question of um, a knowledge um, it's 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 on us it's in a startup side to um, be clear about this difference yeah, I think uh, that's a question we're asking ourselves every day. And I think there's definitely a layered answer here. I think fundamentally, um, startups are new by design. Uh, uh, you know, they're doing something new in a new way. Uh, so they're often looking to disrupt something existing uh, or where we have something, an established way of doing something. And they're also focused on exponential growth, which again, uh, it, it, these are concepts uh, that are hard to understand they're not status quo and people just generally have an easier time understanding what is the status quo. You know, an SME is like a local bakery or a washing salon. That's something you have plenty of examples about uh, on, from your childhood. Um, so there's also a, a, not a universal definition of what a startup is. You know, a, a startup in America, it might be very much different to what a startup in Luxembourg is, you know, also in terms of size. Uh, and if you're a startup in Luxembourg, you're by design thinking globally because your market will never be enough to sustain you. Um, 
Um, and and uh, I think for policymakers, another key challenge is that uh, start, nine out of ten startups fail within five years. So again, it's a rolling kind of a rolling moving process uh, that is an ecosystem that is creating value, and an ecosystem is a lot harder to grasp. Um, so many just kind of, uh, or oftentimes in the past, it's been put aside as you know a, cr a bunch of crazy uh, 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 nerds uh, building you know uh, building a crazy tech products. Um, the last five years, you know, the last years have shown us that it's so much more that startups are. Uh, uh, permeating every sector of the economy and every part of our daily lives. Uh, they have potential in, 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 in many ways we cannot un understand. And just thinking about AI uh, is already, you know, mind boggling enough. Uh, 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 uh. So, so I think for startups, uh, uh, I think it's important that, I mean, whether we agree on an exact definition of what it is or not, or if we have a more high level definition that a startup maybe is something an innovative company doing something technologically innovative and has a financing structure uh, to reflect this and has a lot of ambitions to grow exponentially. Um, the, it is already that having this high definition uh, 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 that maybe is a first step and, and taking this to policymakers uh, uh, is maybe a first step towards uh, 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 having a, a sustained conversation. And I think it's incumbent on associations like ours to, to uh, keep explaining this. So uh, maybe just as I close, one of the goals of Allied for Startups in this political mandate is to make sure that every member of the European Parliament knows three startups in his or her constituency. Because we think that uh, if you know a startup in your neighborhood, you're far less likely to make a decision, a political decision that adversely affects them. Yeah. And, uh, and that'll also help them not just to think about the big techs, but actually to think about your local ecosystem when you're making a decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the, the digital uh, transformation shift is, is on everything. Um, maybe we should go to the World Trade Organization first to explain the, the difference, and then <laughs> like a top-down um, rule uh, to, to, to make this, this, this division. Why not? It's just, uh, just popping up on my mind is right, right now. Uh, Benny, just to, to really wrap up, um, is there something uh, else that you'd like to share, like a final message, at least for, from the, for this very moment? I know this is to be continued. Um, maybe you have a, um, a, a final uh, live debate um, with you afterwards uh, to, to close this season in July. Um, but I'd like to, to, to invite you to have a final word to, to the ones who, who's watching us. Super. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. But but uh, if I were to sum it up, I would say you know even if not tomorrow, policy decisions do matter for you. Um, so it, it makes sense to be you know use your democratic right to have your voice in in this in this debate and not just the DSA but in any kind of debate. Really, uh, what you care about if you are building a company and there's something in your way to scale up, policymakers want to hear from you. Uh, there's often a the misconception that there's an ivory tower uh, uh, and and uh, you know nobody's really interested um, and of course you know there's been problems in the past but policymakers really want to hear from startup founders so encourage anyone and everyone to uh, reach out to your policymaker on on any issue where you're facing a trouble uh, scaling up. Amazing Benedict this is what in the end uh, like a perfect loop this is also what democracy is about uh it, it's also everywhere uh to any kind of business so thank you so much for your time for sharing uh your thoughts and your experience on this um this is the beta cast um we have more episodes on policy making um if you liked please share uh please pr click on the button to to subscribe to follow us um share your comments be sure it's going to be read and you give feedback to you. Um, next week, there's more to come. Benedict, thank you again. Um, and stay tuned to the next Beta E BetaCast. We see you soon. Stay tuned. And that's it. Thank you very much for having me. And I, I would hope to one day be in, in in, in, in Lisbon under under better circumstances and we can do it in person. 
Oh yeah, and I'm sure it's totally different in spite of my broken English. Uh, I, I know that we could communicate in a perfect way and it would be great to have more the warmth of people close to us to have a conversation. Um, it's, we can avoid that. It makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really appreciate that you're taking the time to also kind of have a sustained conversation and not just, uh, you know, five minutes and deal with it, but to think a bit more deeply about some of these issues uh, as they are complicated. Oh yeah, but at least talking by, uh, for myself, I have problems on being too um, shallow when you're discussing things. We went through so much topics and even though I'm, I'm feeling like not guilty, you see, there's so much to be, uh, yeah. way more things to be said, but um, I try to, to share a, a glimpse of these perspectives and especially the DSA. Um, I really think we, we, we must reinforce this. People are not aware uh, of the impact this can have on their businesses. I do think uh, you're absolutely right there. I'm, I'm happy you're realizing the magnitude uh, uh, that uh, this thing will have. And uh, I know you've seen one of the webinars. We had a German webinar today with two MEPs. SoundCloud, I don't know if you know them, SoundCloud was there. Sure, sure. Uh, Amazing. So it was a really yeah, it was really exciting. Again, you know, SoundCloud is all oh, about and they And they had many, it's a roller coaster story. Yeah, uh, it's funny because they asked me to, to introduce them as a small tech company. And, uh, you know, they have over <laughs> a, thousand, a thousand employees. And, and last week, uh, the, the guy from OLX, which is a, like a, the, the Bulgarian eBay, which has like, I don't know, 50 employees said, we're not a startup anymore, we're a scale up. And that just shows, uh, you know, the questions with the definition, uh, uh, how 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 different people see this. Just um, perfect, and also the cultural the cultural understanding of what you do. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, but but you know, if you guys, uh, we don't have to uh, do this in the next month. But if you guys want to, you know, do a do a Portuguese version of the DSA for startups uh, 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 campaign, and I know. I mean, Simon is always also kind of curious from, from Startup Portugal and, and, and available. And I know you guys have been doing a lot of uh, you know, activities on, on the policy front. Uh, Ricardo reached out to me and also told me that he's coming to Brussels soon. Um, we can definitely think about that in, in, you know, in a few months time. And right now our schedule is super rammed, but if we find a date in a few months to do it, uh, a webinar is easily set up. Um, mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. No, you can count on us if you'd like to do something more oriented to Portugal. We can also involve Startup Portugal, it's super important. Because currently, I would say that they are the more um, like association-oriented entity in Portugal. They connect the private sector and the government. And for sure, it could be cool to involve them. Um, we are totally open uh, to, to do that, uh, count on us. And yes, Ricardo is moving to Brussels in exactly in 30 days and he's going to spend uh, spend a year there yeah the portuguese presidency is coming up um it's just after the german one so uh, i guess we'll have to uh, coordinate well yeah yeah it, it, it's a good move um and we are trying to be also more um european projects oriented there's a lot of things to be to be done uh we are super happy with uh, online course we 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 are running as a consortium, um, mm -hmm. almost two, two thousand, almost three thousand learners, um, wow. with different universities. Uh, it has been amazing. It's courtship, um, corporate entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. we share tools and startup perspective, corporate perspective, um, also a data pitch. Uh, we mm -hmm. were involved. Now a new one for Urban um, Life called Vox Pop. Um, and Ricardo is usually, he, he's the guy um, pushing for that. So I'm pretty much sure that something's going to happen next year. Yeah, it's fantastic. And just, just so you, I mean, you know, whoever holds the council presidency um, usually does a series of events in their home country, um, um, including, you know, a digital day or a startup, a startup day. And that's basically, you know, a, a, when, when also there's a policy discussion, but a lot of you know startup folks uh, come together, and, and uh, it's 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 a very a very nice you know event, 
and um, a lot of these have been cancelled now and in the German presidency a lot of these won't happen so chances are that the first you know real startup days again will be in in Portugal uh, during the Portuguese presidency which will put all the more focus on on, on, on you guys and and I'd love to you know when we hear something about what could happen uh, in DG Connect or DG Grow uh, for these events, love to you know include you as a local partner. You know, if there's a, if there's an event happening and we can do a policy discussion on the side and you know bring in some of your members, and you know, that would already be you know we'd, mm -hmm. we'd have we'd be able to leverage an event and you know all this kind of format being in place and just insert our our content. Mm -hmm. Depending, uh, let, let's wait and see. But depending how we, uh, how it goes this uh, season, um, eventually let, let's talk afterwards because you can use this this content or some of these uh, topics as a starting point or a context. Like you can watch this, you can go through the Allied for Startups website, um, be informed, and then come over to 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 be part of a discussion. Um, to be continued. Um, as I told you, the doors are, are, are open. I'm just curious to before uh, to, 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 to finish the recording. Do you play the piano? Is it you? On good days, I try to. At the start, at the start of the crisis, I also managed to do 30 minutes a day. But in the last weeks, I've been so swamped with with work and other things that I haven't been able to uh, play as, as as much. But if there should be a time to play piano, it should be now. Are you two as well? Uh, no, I, I, I'm more um, the percussion guy. Ah. Yeah, drums and percussion. Uh, mm -hmm. I love to. I'd love to 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 play, uh, but it's not exactly my thing. I, I in the past I had uh, bands and projects mm -hmm. and performances, but now it's more about um, rhythm. I'm definitely also a better. Uh, uh listener than player, especially with my German sausage fingers, but uh, <laughs> uh, something I've always admired about 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 uh, uh, drummers and percussionists is their uh, their ability to work with rhythm, like something, you know, that I, I, I play a lot by ear and I don't read notes that much, but something that always kills me is when you have two notes maybe on the left hand and three notes at the same time on the right, so you have to do like dum, 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 dum. And um, and that kills me. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because kind of for sure, uh, without rhythm, you, you you can play. Yeah, uh, that's always been a bit of a, a tricky one. But you know, you it's 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 you live and learn, and it's it's good practice. Yeah, to, to be to be honest, I, I could easily give up on everything and just live, have a um, a design for life through music for sure. Yeah, no. let's, let's say about the future. Uh, deserves or what's going to happen who knows in another lifetime yeah we're also just starting a research project with our uh, 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 well with supporting a tender from the university of amsterdam where they're looking going to study how um, artists use platforms during covid19 to earn new revenues which i think is really exciting and timely um, i guess it's also a discussion for another time oh super can you have any any link to share it's all still kind of secret, but essentially uh, they're they're collecting these uh, partners to make a tender um, for the University of Amsterdam uh, with the Dutch government, and I think also. I are going to submit the proposal for for the research. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, it, it has good, quite good chances, but um, but it's kind of still in that early phase uh, mm -hmm. of, of kind of. Thing. So I've said we'd be happy to kind of um, be supportive as an AFS network and. Uh, if it gets green light, then we would pass this on to everyone to you know, submit their ideas and proposals. Mm -hmm. oh, it's an amazing topic. Uh, I'm a bit outside of music, uh, in, unfortunately, as a promoter of things. I, I used to be in the past. Now I run with some friends a project called uh, Loops Expanded. It's only um, um, focused on, on loops in video art and moving image. Mm -hmm. And we just finished the open call. Now I have more than 80 hours of video to watch and I have more or less 10 days to do so is going oh to be god. hard. Oh my god, that sounds like Game of Thrones binge watching. <laughs> yeah, it's a binge watching during vacations. I will be on vacation next week. <laughs> but this is going to be my my, my the fun part. I'll, 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 I won't steal any more of your time, but um, indeed it's one of these conversations people aren't having is 
how we can use the te technology to make sure artists and the creative sector stays alive during COVID-19. It's, it's uh, something we don't think about at all. Yeah, I try to push in the survey this question, like what really give you um, reasons to believe during your quarantine? And because, okay, I, I'm biased by my, my community, the, the, the people clo uh, closer to me. And for sure, art was almost everything because it's a, it's a way to, to, to create sense, to, to, to go through things. Uh, but it wasn't the most, uh, the most um, addressed answer. It's more about, uh, more about personal conversations, mm -hmm. uh, the main answer for, in, uh, on the survey. That's interesting. Yeah, people are connecting a lot via Zoom to folks they haven't spoken to in a while. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is nice. I, I've tried to read a bit more, uh, which is also nice. Um, uh, but but by now I'm also pretty fed up. With, I have a pretty, we're in a pretty small apartment, so I'd love to get out again. And you know, <laughs> it wouldn't be possible. It's, it's raining. And it's going to be now? raining the whole next oh. week. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be raining the whole next week. So, you know, it doesn't make life better. <laughs> well, at least may, maybe you can have the time to play the piano again. Good point. I should do that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Benedict, thank you again. It was great to, to, to have this conversation. Thank you so much, Alison. It's really been a real pleasure and I hope we can uh, continue to, to speak frequently. Yeah, deal. See you soon.